This video is going to be a guide in how to self-publish a fiction novel. I'm going to go through each step that I went through in my journey and what I learned along the way. Step one, prepare to write the novel. Don't worry about establishing a social media footprint. Don't create your author website. Write. Write short stories. Write long stories. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I've caught poetry. Oh, really? Oh, well, don't worry. So I used to suffer from short stories. Really? When? Oh, once upon a time. Read books. Read books on writing. Take a class. Join a writing group. Write fan fiction. I've got 45,000 words on AO3, and frankly, those are rookie numbers in this racket. Step two, write the damn novel. What are you preparing? You're always preparing. Just go. Let's go. Write your book, and then quite possibly bury it. I think nine times out of ten, that first novel, it's just not going to be good enough. I wrote a novel, 100,000 words. That book is never going to see the light of day. It didn't have strong enough bones, in my opinion, to make it worth my time to polish it to the point that I would be comfortable publishing it. So I moved on. Step three, write another novel. Write it improving upon your first novel with everything you've learned, recognizing that the first draft is still going to be rough. You can read the first draft of Crew of Exiles, my self-published novel, online. Link in the description. It's rough. It's only about 45,000 words long, but it's up there in all of its first draft glory. Step four, revise the novel. This is going to take a long time. I spent about 10 months writing Crew of Exiles and over two years revising it. Now those numbers are going to be different for everybody at every different point in their author journey, but I'm just throwing them out there because I want to include numbers. I'm going to keep including numbers throughout this video. Step five, determine whether or not the novel is done. It's not. Step six, revise more. Listen to your beta readers. You did get weirdly specific when you were describing Annie's body. Beware of, well, this is the best that I can make it, so I guess I'll publish it. That doesn't mean it's good enough. You sure you're ready for this? I'll do my best. Your best? Losers always whine about their best. This may all sound harsh, but you can improve. You have improved. You will continue to improve. But right now in this moment, you may not be good enough to write a publishable novel. When will you know if yours is good enough? You may not ever know for certain. We can't help but compare ourselves to other books we've read. I want to really encourage you, though, to take time with this decision and ask yourself, is this something that I can be proud of for all time? Without comparing it to, you know, some crappy traditionally published book or some self-published book that got some awards, but you're like, oh, well, my book is better. It's really tough. We writers, we live with a lot of doubt because we are making tough judgment calls all the time. And this is one of them. Step seven, query the book. This is a video about self-publishing, but maybe you want to try traditional publishing. I did. Now I'm going to make a whole other separate video on my querying process because I am trying to get traditionally published. But briefly, I researched about 100 agents, selected a top 10 list, submitted to all 10, got rejected, hated every minute of this process, then moved on. Step eight, research the self-publication process. Now, hopefully that's what you're here for, right? Jillian Perkins has a great YouTube video on how to self-publish your first book. She's very thorough. Daniel Green has a video on his self-publishing experience. Uh, he can be a little eccentric. I am not always a fan of his videos, but um, I think it's helpful to just see different people's perspectives on this process. He's also got a follow-up video on how to find success in self-publishing. This is going to talk more about marketing, about advertising, and those sorts of things. Please be aware that advice that applies to one author does not necessarily apply to another. Nonetheless, there's some good advice in this video as well. If you're looking to read more about how to self-publish your book, Jane Friedman has a blog with lots of good posts. Well, at least two good posts uh, and lots of detail. Another blog post on her website, janefriedman.com slash self-publishing-checklist has, well, a checklist, uh, which was very helpful to me uh, to get a sense of how long it might take. Now, these are all estimates, of course, but it can give you a sense of what timeline you're looking at. All these links are going to be down in the video description, but I'm also going to summarize the self-publishing steps roughly in order. First, of course, is finalizing your book. After that, you should get a professional editor to do a copy edit. This is not the same thing as a developmental edit. There are different sorts of edits. A developmental edit is more for plot and structure. Copy edit is literally grammar and typos. 
Next, you're going to want to write some sort of cover design brief to send to cover artists. You want to describe what is the vibe of your book, what is the genre of your book. Perhaps you want to describe some scenes or some characters and what they look like or what sort of clothes they wear. You really do want an artist with some experience doing book covers because there's a variety of special considerations nowadays in the modern digital era. People may be looking at your book in black and white. It might be in high resolution, but it might be in low resolution. It might be thumbnail sized, or it might be the full book cover size, of course. They might be holding a physical object in their hand. They might be looking at it on a phone or on an e-reader. So you want your cover to look good, to be readable at all sizes and in a variety of qualities. Before you hire a cover designer or freelance it out on one of the many freelance websites, do some research. What do some best-selling books look like in your genre? Find a few covers that you like, that, th that you think might have some comparison to the book you wrote. You may also need to find a layout person, how to arrange the cover art that was created, how to arrange the title, We're talking like font and typesetting, where your name is going to appear. Are there going to be any blurbs, any uh, compliments about the book from, you know, some famous author that you were lucky enough to get to read your, your self-published book here? Where is it going to go on the cover? How large is the font going to be? All these details. Um, you can do these things yourself, and I'll mention a few tools that can help you do that. But uh, personally, I went with a professional to do it. You also, and it could be potentially the same person, need to hire someone to do the interior formatting of the book. So the interior layout, again, different typesetting. How are each of the chapters going to look? Stuff like that. You need to write your author biography, your dedication, acknowledgments, and the back cover blurb. You're going to need to register ISBNs and barcodes for your books. Typically, you need um, at least certainly the ISBNs for ebooks separately from paperback, possibly separately from hardback. I actually don't have a hardback, so I'm not sure about that. Boker.com is where you're going to go for the, some of those things. You need to finalize your ARC. So ARC is ARC. It's your advanced reader copy. It's basically a digital file of your completed book. You should research Amazon and other distributors. I'll provide a, a link to a really excellent list. You need to decide, are you going to go exclusive with Amazon for your ebook or not? You need to contact a print-on-demand company such as Ingram Spark, so that when someone purchases your book, a physical copy can be printed and delivered to them. You should order your own physical author copies and check them thoroughly. You might be tired by this point and impatient, but it's really important to find mistakes now rather than later. You might wish to get advanced reviews so that on your release date, your book already has reviews and ratings. You need to create EPUB and Mobi files for e-readers. You might want to plan launch marketing. Finally, you're going to launch your novel. The work, of course, doesn't end there. Afterwards, don't forget to be gracious to those who helped you along the way. Give signed copies of your book with a thank you note to these people. And furthermore, beyond that, and I'll talk about this in this video, marketing and, you know, what do you do once the book is out there? Step nine, more details and how I did it. The uh, system that I organized this video in steps uh, no longer is really applicable, but we're just going to keep going with it. So there can always be a trade-off between money and time. I chose to spend more money in order to spend less time. I got help from an author services company. I was looking for a one-stop shop to coordinate all that stuff I just mentioned. I ultimately spent $6,248 for a professional copy edit, custom cover art, jacket design and layout, interior layout, typesetting, and production of the ARC, the advanced reader copy, as well as getting set up on Amazon and Ingram Spark. The $6,000 did not include any marketing whatsoever. As always, you have to be careful. There are a lot of scammers out there. Do your homework before paying for anything, really, but including author services. There are good watchdog sites out there that you can check out. Uh, there's also a good list of best self-publishing services on selfpublishingadvice.org. So what are author service providers? Well, first of all, what they're not. They're not hybrid publishers. They're not vanity presses. They're not publishers at all. What they do is that they are a coordinator to connect you with vetted, experienced freelancers, as well as help you just navigate confusing websites and processes. There's still more research to do to find what's a fit for you.
These companies offer a variety of niche services. Some only do self-help books. Some focus on authors who simply want a limited number of physical copies, perhaps for friends or family. The self-publishing industry caters to a lot of folks who want a memoir to pass on to their children. Now, most such companies will offer you a free phone consultation with the expectation of following up a month or two later. These phone conversations can last anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. I went through five of them after making, well, a top five list of these author service companies. I prepared a list of questions for these phone conversations, and I'm going to share with you uh, my list of questions, some of which I think were good questions to ask and some which were not necessary. Question. Every end-to-end -end self publishing service provider seems to do a lot of nonfiction. Why should I put my fiction with you? Now, the answer that most told me was, oh, we do tons of fiction. Okay, so I didn't get a lot of information out of that question, but it still might be something worth asking. I asked directly, have you worked with science fiction authors? I got very honest responses. Some told me that they actually had not, but they did argue that uh, the process is very similar for other types of fiction. Uh, many said like, oh, well, we've worked with fantasy, things like that. So I asked also, everyone says professional cover design, but I wanted specifics. So you have in-house artists, you contract artists. Can I reach out to artists myself? And how many times can I be fussy and say I don't like whatever they produced for the cover? Now, my answers were pretty similar on this one. Everybody basically contracts with their particular freelance artists that they like to work with. And there's always some sort of process for having a back and forth conversation with the artists where, you know, they'll present something and I'll say, oh, I don't like it or I'd like this changed. Um, there are limitations to that process, but um, I mean, for the most part, I got the same answer from everybody, which is yes. We have a particular artist. Yes, you will be able to talk to them. Yes, you will be able to have a back and forth and get your changes met. I asked, what are the verification steps throughout this long process? Because it does take many months. What recourse do I have if I'm not satisfied? And really most of the answers that I got, at least how I interpreted them, was that like any business, they would love to have repeat customers and they certainly want to have recommendations and good reviews from their clients, from their customers. So that's sort of the recourse that you have. I did ask directly. I said, just to confirm one time purchase on my part, and then I keep all the rights to my work. And they all said, yes. And if anybody doesn't say yes, you need to run away from them as fast as you can. I did ask when I'll see a contract and like how much I pay up front and how much I pay at the end. Um, it was all pretty similar. Everybody says contract uh, uh, shows up relatively early in this interaction. Um, usually there's about 50% payment up front, 50% at the end. Some uh, companies did it more where you'd like pay for individual services along the way, but they were, they were all pretty similar in this regard. On the note of the contract, um, I read my contract front to back. Um, it didn't contain like a ton of legal jargon. Uh, it wasn't that hard to understand. It's not like a literary contract that you would have with a, a, pub a traditional publisher. It's not like that. Those things, you want a lawyer who is skilled in that area to read it over and make sure you're not getting screwed. Um, this is not like that. At least my contract, it was very easy to read. And, you know, I'm a total amateur at that sort of thing. So uh, I, I assume it's the same, you know, regardless of which uh, publishing services company you would go with. Now, there are going to be uh, little a la carte add-ons uh, throughout this process, and there may be fees associated with those. There are times where I was worried that I was getting like nickel and dimed with optional but strongly recommended extras. I'm going to go through the details of those later on. Um, I suspect that's just sort of a part of this process where if you've never done it before, it's going to be a surprise, these extra things that you're going to pay for. But hopefully that's why you're watching this video to find out ahead of time. I asked, how long does my relationship with your company last and what happens at the end of it? And the answer is it lasts until the book is released. Beyond that, if I want some sort of follow-up services, I want help making changes to the cover or making changes to the interior or doing marketing, if that's a service they provide, well then, you know, we work out another contract and, you know, 50% payment up front and then at the end and we go from there. But basically at the end of it, the interaction is done. The book is out there. I have all the passwords to Amazon and any other accounts that are relevant. Everything is set up to go into my bank account, and that's the end of story. 
I did ask these companies, what is a service you do not provide? And some of them said like, oh yeah, like we don't do marketing, for example. Um, but this was kind of a dumb question. I mean, you know, what services don't you provide? They, they don't, they're not going to give me fries and a large soda. Like there's any number of services that are not provided. I asked, do you recommend Kindle Unlimited to authors and what do you think of it? Um, I think this is a good question because it'll just help you get a vibe check with whoever you're talking to and see how honest they'll be. Um, because, you know, somebody who's being honest will tell you there's advantages and there's disadvantages and possibly help you explore what some of those advantages and disadvantages are. All right, so I want to say that all of these phone conversations I had, they were all very professional. Some of the agencies really don't do the advertising, the marketing. Um, none of them were going to get any rights to my work. I retained all those rights. Pricing was all between like $3,000 and $8,000. And most of that variation, because that's obviously a big range, $3,000 to $8,000, but most of that range depended on me, depended on what extras I wanted. I can't know for sure because I only went with one of these companies, but I suspect that uh, they're all relatively in the same ballpark price-wise. Now, all these phone consultations I had, they felt like a sales pitch because that's what they were, except for one phone call. And this made the difference to me. One of these companies asked me, how long have you been writing? How many revision passes has this story been through? It wasn't much, but the vibe on that call was a little bit different. And this was Axel Author Services. They have a trademarked slogan. The slogan is literally, we won't let you publish crap. Uh, it may be corny, but I kind of felt like they really didn't want me to publish crap. Now, you know, maybe it's all advertising, but I did have a good experience with them. All right, step 10, the process and the timeline and the line items. We're going to get into numbers here. So in November of 2021, I got a copy edit of my entire novel. It was over 96,000 words at 1.5 cents per word. That cost me about $1,500. 50% paid ahead of time, 50% paid upon completion. The editor provided me with a four-page style sheet. It was detailed. It included how the editor treated the Oxford comma and other style concerns, every single proper noun that I had used, every single acronym, and any techno babble sci-fi words that I put in there. It was very thorough. I was very impressed. Well worth the price. If you're not getting a professional copy edit, what are you doing? I reviewed and approved or rejected all of the editor's changes. I did reject many of them. Uh, grammar fixes to dialogue, for example. Um, maybe some of the dialogue is supposed to be ungrammatical, and I want to leave it that way. Okay, so three months later, well, two and a half months later, January 2022, I paid the lion's share of the entire fee, or maybe I think 50% of it, $4,800. This would cover them sharing a publishing timeline updated at least monthly, interior layout and typesetting, original cover design for the print and ebook copies, producing final interior files for the print and ebook, book pricing recommendations, book category recommendations. Note on the item of categories, there are a ton of these and it can be easy or hard to find your category depending on what exactly it is you wrote. There are categories ranging from metaphysical and visionary fiction, that's one category, to humorous dark comedy. Yes, both of those adjectives on comedy. It seriously gets really niche. The fee also covered assigning ISBNs to the various book formats, barcode for the back cover, uploading the print and ebook copies to Kindle Direct Publishing, Amazon for print and ebook, Ingram Spark for extended for extended distribution for print. Um, that's basically like bookstores can order it directly from Ingram Spark, and also draft to digital. It also covered activating the book listing on Amazon and all online Ingram Spark retailers. Okay, next month, February 2022, uh, we discussed getting advanced reviews for the book. Now, this is not free, um, but it means that on launch day, you've already got reviews on your book, which is pretty cool and presumably helps you with that book launch momentum that you want. So I paid extra here. I paid $682 for three months on NetGalley, as well as an author spotlight on NetGalley, as well as reviews from Midwest Book Reviews, Kirkus Indie Reviews, and Clarion Reviews. This all needs to be set up well in advance. I think it's Kirkus in particular that requires six months prior to your book's release that they need to have the copy in order to get you a review. So what are all these things? Well, NetGalley is a subscription service where you make your book available for reviewers. It's free to the reviewers. 
The reviewers on NetGalley are theoretically influential, which usually means they're a bookstore owner, an educator, a librarian, they're, you know, a, a book reviewer, book influencer, that sort of thing. It seems widely agreed, at least to people I've talked to, that NetGalley is worth it. Midwest, Kirkus, and Clarion are a little bit different. From them, you only get one review each. But they're very professional reviews, and these sites are widely known. I mean, Kirkus reviews, like Stephen King has Kirkus reviews on his books, like on the book jacket. And now I do too. And that's pretty cool. And these are things that I can use in my own promotional material as well, after the book is launched or, you know, leading up to the launch. All right, so next month, moving forward, March 2022, uh, we held some meetings, online meetings, to choose from a selection of typesetting options, interior layout options, and uh, cover art. The original cover didn't have silhouettes that I felt reflected the characters and had too many of these little firefly effects, some of which appeared on someone's crotch. And I was like, okay, we gotta, gotta move those around a little bit. In May of 2022, the advanced reader copy, or ARC, was finalized. This was just about six months after I'd started this process with Axel Author Services, about nine months after the consultation. At this point, the client, me, purchases ISBNs directly so that I own them. Uh, the cost is like, or at least at the time, it was like $125 per ISBN or a package of 10 for $295, $295. That was really obvious. And you need at least a couple of them for the different versions of your book, paperback, ebook, and audio. So I just, I just bought the package. And now I have a bunch of ISBNs sitting around uh, for when I do my next book. I registered my own copyright in uh, the US, Canada, and UK, and there's websites that'll help take you through that process. Um, th the only real frustration I had with that was, I think, the Canada one. Um, the website, like, just wouldn't let me do it. It was, it was a web problem. It was fundamentally like a website problem, um, and I just, like, signed out and came back the next day, and then, like, it was easy, and it just let me through. Um, but these sort of little hiccups can be very frustrating because like, I've never done any of this stuff before. And so I just don't know if the problem is on my end or if it's on their end. So it takes some grit to get through this whole process, even when you're paying someone to help you with a lot of the steps. At some point you need to decide whether or not you're going to go Amazon exclusive. Uh, in my opinion, Amazon makes it way too shitty of a deal to not. By being exclusive with Amazon, your book gets to go on Kindle Unlimited, which gives you access to people who subscribe to it who are typically voracious readers and the ability to get paid per page read. Now, Kobo, I am told, also has a similar system with wide reach outside the United States, but the United States is the biggest uh, e-reader market and Amazon dominates it. And finally, my book was launched in October of 2022. Now, most of the intervening time there, you'll notice there's a bunch of months where seemingly nothing happened. Well, in a lot of respects, it didn't. I was kind of just waiting on a lot of these reviews to come in uh, and maybe just doing some finalizing little uh, things about, you know, which of these nice reviewer remarks we wanted to put where on the cover, just little stuff like that. Step 11, sit back and relax as the money rolls in. Dude. Oh. Yeah, right. You wish. I haven't made my money back. I probably never will. I've heard that the average self-published book uh, expects about 250 lifetime sales. The median, however, is well below that. Almost all of my sales occurred in bursts near the initial release or coinciding with an advertising campaign. One and a half years after the initial release, a little over 3,000 people have purchased or downloaded it. Now that sounds amazing, but most of those were downloaded on free giveaway days. So if I remove the ebook downloads from free promotion days, I have sold 235 paperbacks, ebooks, and audiobooks, because I also did make an audiobook, and that's in a totally separate video where you can check that out. 92 of those sales were paperbacks purchased online, 32 were ebooks purchased at full price, 39 were ebooks purchased for 99 cents on discount days, 48 were paperbacks sold directly by me uh, in person, either to strangers at conventions or to local bookstores or to friends or any of that sort of thing and 24 were audiobook sales. Not terrible numbers. Um, of course, I wish they were better. Step 12, marketing and advertising. First, what I have not done. I have not purchased advertising on any social media platforms, and neither have I purchased advertising on Amazon. 
I've heard mixed things about Amazon. Um, some people say it's absolutely essential. Other people say that it didn't result in any major sales for them. Um, social media ads I've mostly heard are a waste of money, but you will hear some differing opinions on that depending on who you talk to. I have marketed my book by scheduling free and discount days on Amazon and tweeting about these discount days on Twitter and other platforms. Now, most of these discounts I also scheduled to coincide with mailing list promotions, which I paid for. Amazon allows authors to schedule up to five discounted or free days per 90-day period. Now, it's not 90 days since your last discount, but 90 days on Amazon's internal rotating schedule, which is weird and annoying and confusing. But be mindful of this stupid system when you try to schedule your discounts because you may not be able to schedule, uh, I mean, you can't schedule more than 90 days into the future. And once you're into an individual rotation block of 90 days, you can only schedule up until the end of it. And then when it rolls over into the next one, you can schedule into the next one. This is very stressful because you have to schedule the mailing lists way in advance. There was one time I actually forgot. I, I lost track. I had purchased the mailing list sale. And then because I had to mark it in my calendar on a particular date to be able to even set the Amazon one, I somehow missed that reminder and, and I, I screwed it up. Now, the only plus side that I can see for this goofy system Amazon has is that technically you could schedule five free days at the end of one 90 day period. And then like right when it turns over, jump online and schedule five more free days for the beginning of the next period to end up with 10 in a row. If that was like something you really wanted to do. In terms of the paid mailing lists, these are essentially email lists that readers can sign up for for free. And then the readers will be emailed information each day about free and discounted books that are available. Authors are the ones who are paying to get slots on the email that gets sent out each day. Which, by the way, if you're a reader, this is an awesome thing and you should maybe check out. Now, again, you have to schedule these in advance because there are a limited number of promotional slots per day. This does make it hard to make them coincide with each other unless you're scheduling all of them multiple months in advance. Also, also, weekend slots are more popular and fill up faster. I have used and would recommend using the following lists, The Fussy Librarian, Book Barbarian, Book Raid, Lit Nuts, and Books Butterfly. Book Barbarian, I recall, this would be easy to look up, uh, is geared towards science fiction and fantasy. All of these services, they cost in the range of $20 to $60. Sometimes you can like pay more and you'll be like listed first or, you know, have a bigger ad on the uh, email that goes out. Book Raid is really neat because for that one, you only pay for the number of clicks that you get. The only awkward part there is, of course, you're not sure what you're going to pay ahead of time. So you pay afterwards, but it's honestly one of the cheaper ones. Now, since it's mostly going to be the same readers on these lists, you're probably going to see diminishing returns. So it's not wise to hit every list at every single opportunity. The idea of spending money and then giving the book away for free is to hopefully generate more reviews, more ratings, and generate momentum, ideally to get picked up by Amazon's own internal advertising, which of course wants to sell books to people. So it might as well be your book that they're selling. Now, has that happened? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I haven't seen uh, momentum build for my own book. Uh, it's certainly not happened to the degree that I would like. One thing that I could have done better with advertising is to really come out guns blazing with the mailing list promotions and even free days and maybe even other ads aligning with the initial publication. Um, I've heard that the best time to get the ball rolling for your book is when it first comes out. And this is, I mean, this is algorithm. We're playing the game of the algorithm so that we then get promoted to other people by Amazon. Now, I didn't even know these mailing lists existed when my book first came out, so I didn't end up doing that. Step 13, audiobook. All right, I made a whole separate video uh, going into exactly this level of detail about the audiobook process, in some ways going into more detail, going into the process of recording and releasing your own audio book. So go check that out if you're interested. Step 14, reflections. My biggest regrets are relatively minor. 
In a moment of weakness, I did spend money on a book influencer. It wasn't a scam. I just don't think it was worth paying this individual to post about my book. Um, I do believe that they read it. You know, they they posted it on their social medias. Um, but I just didn't think that was actually worth the money. And I definitely did it in a moment where I was just like, gosh, I wish more people would read my book and I feel sad and I'm going to dump some money on this influencer, influencer uh, to post about it. Another regret, as I mentioned, is that I could have been more savvy about having a real slam bang release of the book. Um, I mean, I was really good about reaching out to friends, family, truly distant relatives <laughs> in some cases and letting them know about it. But in terms of getting strangers eyes, I think I could have done a better job of that by using the mailing lists, by having some free days or discount days, that sort of thing. Since the release of my book, I have spent money um, submitting to contests. You gotta be really careful here again because a lot of these are also scams. Um, but just because you have to pay for them doesn't make them a scam. They're all money-making ventures, um, but many of them are totally legitimate. And again, there are watchdog sites and you can Google, you know, is this a scam or not? Um, in hindsight, I think definitely this was mostly vanity, the submissions to contests. I still feel proud. I mean, my book won some awards. Like, I'm super proud of that. Um, but I definitely was motivated by vanity. I also hoped that maybe it would uh, translate into some more sales. I haven't seen that translation happen. That's it. That's all I regret. Um, I don't regret self-publishing or when I chose to do it. Uh, for my next novel, I'm going to try to traditionally publish. I'm looking at querying 50 to 100 agents instead of the 10 that I did for Crew of Exiles. Um, I've already queried 30 of them. Um, if it doesn't work out, I'll likely self-publish again. I do plan on recording the audiobook before publishing paperback and ebook versions, which is not the order that I did it in for Crew of Exiles, um, because you know after the process of hiring a copy editor, Reading the audiobook, recording the audiobook and editing it is such a phenomenal way to catch any lingering typos and polish the final project to just an absurd level of quality. I also plan on coordinating the uh, much bigger release, uh, much bigger launch day with mailing list ads and free days. Sure, I'm giving away my new book baby, but this is, I'm told, the way to grab the algorithm's attention and hopefully get that momentum that is needed to get readers' eyes onto the page beyond just the friends and family. And that's all I know. I hope this video has been helpful to you uh, and given you some food for thought in your writing and self-publishing journey.